Cool. Um, but there's a, there's a challenge in, um, in getting uh, and finding sellers. Um, many agents um, find that buyer leads are, are much easier to get, especially when they're starting out. And it's, um, it's easier to, because it's easier to get those buyer leads, um, it's more difficult to understand who will mo most likely become a seller and when. Um, secondly, it uh, requires a lot of um, a lot more nurturing to get a seller lead um, or to, to develop that uh, that contact into somebody who's ready to, to purchase. And we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about that as well. Um, and, and of course, it's super frustrating when um, a competing agent um, uh, gets a listing in your area. And we'll talk about how to um, deal with that and, and actually present some opportunities to capitalize on that situation as well today. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as a, a high level agenda, um, we're going to be talking about four proven strategies to win today. And focusing on these four areas will ensure that you're ready to go and ready to engage sellers at any, po any point in uh, in their selling cycle so we'll be talking about some kv core specific things using sell and squeeze pages um, uh, effectively um, pointing out some of the uh, the great uh, creative ways to, to use those um, then we'll be talking about farming and circle prospecting um, the two great tastes that taste great together and uh, we'll be talking about using consumer data and mls data to farm a specific geography then I'm going to turn it over to Cameron. Cameron's going to be talking about uh, a product in our marketplace called Seller Focused Advertising. And then we're going to wrap it up with a conversation uh, around Property Boost. Many of you have probably used Property Boost in the past, but some of you may not know uh, some of the things that Property Boost can do in, in getting um, seller leads and prospects uh, into your database. So um, Cameron will be rounding it off with that. And of course, we'll be answering questions along the way. And uh, um, so we'll, we'll start off with um, just uh, some, some KV Core basics using your cell and squeeze pages effectively. Um, th there are uh, three specific KV Core site pages that you should be using. Um, number one is your cell page, obviously good for generic advertising, sending people to your website for a home valuation report or a market report. There's a seller squeeze page, and I'm going to be um, showing that in, in a little bit. But that's really effective when you're running a specific campaign for your neighborhood, a high school, some other area, allowing you to maintain continuity between an ad maybe that you've posted on Facebook or LinkedIn. Maybe this got some geographic, uh, geographically specific messaging around that. And then also um, a, uh, um, a custom landing pages as well can be used for engaging your prospects um, for an event or, or some other purpose as well. So just to, to highlight the, the seller squeeze page uh, really quick, um, of course, you've got uh, um, you go into your, your lead engine, you can build a squeeze page. And that's how I got to this page here. And you can select a seller squeeze page and automatically provide hashtags so that when these contacts uh, register for the event that you're promoting or some other thing, um, uh, they can be um, immediately set apart or segmented um, according to the lead source. And of course, you can pick um, uh, different uh, um, cities, zip codes, or um, in my case, I'm gonna choose um, uh, perhaps a, a neighborhood um, in my area Let's do this here real quick. And, um, and then I'm gonna generate some links. Uh, when you first come in here, these will actually be blank. And when you hit the generate link um, uh, page, looks like I've messed that up here a little bit. Let me see if I can recycle the links. There we go. So um, I can, I now have this direct link that I can use anywhere. I can use it in an email. I can use it in, um, in a Facebook post. Um, I can use it in, um, in a tweet. Um, anything that, uh, that might be um, a, a source that you're using to just reach out to, to maybe a neighborhood or something. And of course, there's a short link as well. But if you copy that link and, um, and open that up in your browser, 
um, you'll find that you have this great page that you can edit. Let's see here. Um, you'll have this, you'll have a page that um, um, sets, um, sets up a conversation for, um, uh, again, identifying a seller lead, collecting their address, um, and uh, instantly putting them onto uh, a market report that can, that can uh, communicate some really interesting information for, to them. So this is an area, again, where you can um, push a, a link out there, um, advertising uh, a, a really great call to action is, um, want to know what your home is worth, um, uh, those kinds of things um, to, uh, to, to induce people to, to, to land on this landing page. Um, another one, of course, is the, um, the squeeze page. Sorry, Hank, just before you move on there, there's yeah. a couple of questions just around configuration of this page, and hopefully you can hear me okay now. But um, somebody's asking about the page configuration on the squeeze page that you were just looking at. Yeah. So these, uh, I guess it's the source and the hashtag, if you can maybe just dive in a little bit more on that. And then the second question is about uh, editing any verbiage and language on the actual page, or is yeah, it set yeah, in stone? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an excellent question. I think that the first thing is I'll address the 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 source. This is a source that you define, and this source could be either a marketing channel like LinkedIn or Facebook, or it could be um, some kind of co cohesive campaign that you're building as well. And then the hashtag will be will be similar. And those are those are things that you can arbor, arbitrarily select. And then the location, of course, is is uh, somewhere where you are targeting um uh this this audience and then generating the link um, um builds that link so that automatically when these uh these um contacts are are placed into your smart crm you can see and filter them by source and by hashtag automatically there's there's no further work that you need to do there so around um editing the um the specific um page um, what I would do is actually uh, point you to building a landing page. And this is a, this is a great way to customize um, all the messaging and even the graphics and the background can be customized here. There's, there's a lot that can be customized here. Um, and this is an area where um, I often, uh, as I ask real estate agents, I, I say, what are you passionate about? Um, your, your, it, well, your passion should be the things that lead you to um, lead you to possible uh, potential sellers and creating conversations with people. So here um, you could do something like um, uh, some kind of fundraiser that you're sponsoring. Um, maybe you're, uh, you've, you've bought a banner with the local Little League baseball team, or maybe you're um, holding a, um, uh, you're sponsoring a 5K for the local school. So you, can, you could say um, sign up. The and you can customize all of this uh, this text to be an individual new landing page that um, that um, you, you can use as a registration. And of course, all of these people then become uh, contacts for you um, uh, um, based on um, your affiliation with that neighborhood or, or that event. Um, similar to what we show, showed before. Um, there are different ways to, to customize this. Um, you can put the hashtag on here, five bright, I'll just call it the Brighton 5K. So as you follow up with these people, you know where they came from. Um, you, can, uh, you can customize the text to be register now. Um, and um, the URL, you can also require the phone. Um, that's something that, that might scare some people away. Um, you certainly can get their email. But uh, then you can hit save and, um, and continue, hit the final button. And then that becomes the link that you can now share on Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok or wherever you're advertising um, uh, these kinds of things, wherever you're reaching out to your contacts. So um, we just talked about the, the squeeze page. We've talked about the landing page, two kind of really top of funnel areas where you can uh, you can focus in your efforts. These are all included in KV Core. 
things you can do for free. And of course, I'll point you to um, our support pages where you can learn more about uh, market report squeeze pages and uh, and a lot of the other the, the other kind of um, squeeze pages and um, and landing pages that you can customize as well. Um, so, Cameron, any questions before I move on to the next su next subject here? Yeah, a couple questions. One is um, with the page that you just created uh, for the Brighton 5K, is there a way in KV Core to shorten that link? Um, I don't know of a way in KV Core to do that. Ryan, do you, are you familiar with a, a way to shorten that link or would you recommend just going out to one of the URL shortener services that are out there? Yeah, it's probably the best way to do it. Um, I guess it's not built in the way it is with, the, with our other squeezes, right? So, yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, can yeah. I also mention you can also use the other landing page templates to build your own address cap capture pages if you want to customize the language speaking to that question. So, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then a couple of other questions that have just come up are around how do you use these things? Like, can you uh, use these pages, the, the boost page, the sorry, the landing pages or the squeeze pages um, in a boost? You can't use them in a property boost, but if you wanted to go on to Facebook and create an advertisement like a boosted post and use that in the URL. That's a great way to drive traffic um, and and pull that in. So there's uh, there's plenty of ways to use that um, in all of your marketing campaigns. Um, and I'm just going through here. Um, that's that really covers it for in ter terms of the questions we've had so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Thank you, Cameron, for fielding those. Um, Let's let's get into to farming and circle prospecting. This is a this is a, a term that uh, some people understand, but um, to me these are the magical combination like chocolate and peanut butter for me, where uh, Reese's pieces are just um, uh, really really um, bringing my uh, um, really being a challenge for my diet right now. But uh, at any rate, um, two great things uh, working together that uh, that really um, help you to identify potential sellers in your neighborhood. And this, you know, some of this insight comes from uh, a quote from the National Association of Realtors that said, when a house sells, three of the owners in the 20 close, 20, uh, the closest 20 houses will consider selling in three weeks. So um, when a listing hits the market, whether it's your listing or somebody else's listing, automatically those people around that listing will uh, will be thinking about um, what their home is worth and potentially wondering if, if it's time for them to sell as well. This actually um, happened to my brother. The home next door to his went on the market and um, it was an older home uh, uh, redo, um, uh, but a very, very big lot. And the agent immediately, um, the, the let's see, this is the agent representing the seller when he put it up for sale, walked over, knocked on my uh, knocked on my my brother's door, and said, "Hey, I'm an agent in the area. I just put this this home on the market, and um, wanted to let you know some of the things to think about, as it, it will will likely impact the value of your home as well, because um, my brother was also concerned about, oh, will this lot be subdivided, and now I'll have three homes next to me, or." Um, so, but uh, at any rate, it opened up this conversation for my brother who wasn't considering selling his home to now have an engagement with an agent and, and, uh, and then um, become a contact of that agent. So it's a really, really powerful way to um, use the, the activity that's going on in a neighborhood and, uh, and have a conversation and strike up a, a conversation. Um, the, the you know and, and these people uh, again these sellers they may be uh, ready to list but they might be um, need to be um, uh, kind of nurtured and supported in their their decision making um, around uh, around listing and they take they take a little bit more time because obviously um, uh, before you buy a home you have to list your home in in many cases if if you're an existing homeowner. And um, selling a home can be uh, a very emotionally charged issue where you've got uh, considerations like if you've got kids in school or um, you've got other plans in the works and, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that, um, you know, it's after the new year 
which there's a lot more people thinking about putting their home on the market now that the holidays are over. Um, so a couple of things around, um, around um, digital farming, that's basically taking an email list of owners in a predetermined geographic area and reaching out to them on a regular basis with valuable information. So I talked about that first part of, of the funnel and, um, and getting an additional lead in place. But um, after you've got they, they've gone through your circle prospecting prospect pr process, you need to put them on listing alerts in KV Core. Um, everyone shows up at or everyone looks at um, at listings that show up in their inbox. I've, I um, I have no intentions of moving anytime soon, but I've got two agents that I work with um, and they, I'm on their listing alerts. And I can tell you, I look at every one of those listings that come through, even though I'm, I'm, I'm not getting ready to sell right now. So how do you, I, I mentioned one way to get started, but there are other ways to get started as well, because you may not have a listing that you can talk about. So um, let's talk about seven steps to maximizing mindshare in your local market. First off, obtain a database of uh, customer contact data in a specific area, it can be a zip code, um, uh, perhaps you can filter them by, by neighborhoods. There's a number of different data sources out there. County data is one. Um, there are other providers like, uh, like um, Coal Information, for example, that, that provide this kind of data. Um, then when a new listing comes on the market, send a postcard to call or visit the 20 closest neighbors of that listing. Um, again, you, you could actually drop uh, something off um, uh, at the at the doorstep, um, drop your postcard, drop your your business card there with a, with a quick note. Um, uh, there's uh, there's a number of ways to to reach out and connect with the twenty closest neighbors of listings that that hit the market. And, and of course, this is great to do um, before or after a showing. Sometimes you're in the area. Um, go ahead and and uh, knock on the other doors that are that are nearby. And um, with the pandemic. You know, people are actually home more than they used to be. Um, so um, that's that presents another opportunity for you. Um, and then when you when you uh, identify these consumers, put them on an e email drip campaign, put them on uh, listing alerts and market reports so that they get engaging content about their um, about their their neighborhood and about the, the home values in their neighborhood. Then you could certainly uh, target a Google display ad or a Facebook ad. Um, directly to the same area as well. Um, create a landing page or squeeze page for them to opt in for further in, in, uh, communication. This allows you to focus, allows you to focus on the people who are engaged. And, um, and, uh, and then after that, again, subscribe them to property alerts and market reports. Uh, but the key is um, uh, a consistent human, uh, human touch follow-up. Um, and I would suggest doing this at least once per month. And a follow-up could, could again be one of these fundraisers that you're sponsoring or um, an event or a speaker that's at the library. Simple things that, that uh, again, connect you to the, the activity in the neighborhood. Also, a great way to do this that I hear uh, Ryan and also our success services team talk about a lot is some kind of engaging video some kind of insight that you've uncovered about the market that might be relevant, relevant to them. Um, uh, uh, it could also be things like, um, hey, it's time to change the, uh, the, the, the batteries in your smoke alarm. It could be, um, hey, this is, here are tips for winterizing your home. Engaging content that is um, uh, specific to, um, to people in that neighborhood. So pulling, pulling this off um, is, tremendously valuable, but for some, it takes a lot of effort. Um, uh, and you certainly can do this on your own. I see, I've seen people do this on your own. Um, there, there's another alternative that's a turnkey option, and that's our, our Nosy Neighbor product. Um, here's a, a quick blurb about the, um, the price uh, per zip code uh, per month. Um, but the advantage to, to Nosy Neighbor is there's, there's actually some, some exclusivity built in. So you're the only one using uh, Nosy Neighbor within a zip code. Um, and then we create all of those things uh, uh, automatically for you, including uh, the, the outreach to the neighbors, the automatic production of postcards, 
the integration with KV Core, automated landing page, and all of those kinds of things are, are automatically created for you. And, um, you know, uh, Jim, I, I want to just highlight Jim Keenan. Um, he's with uh, Howard Hanna Real Estate Services in uh, Virginia Beach. And um, he used farming to connect with, um, to, to find a seller um, in, in a community and realized that there was um, some uh, air traffic that was impacting um, some of the, uh, the, um, the neighbors in the area and used that as, um, as a way to, again, reconnect with uh, more, more neighbors in that area. But Jim secured a, a listing after just six weeks with the Nose Neighbor Program. Again, this is just a turnkey option um, to those who um, uh, don't want to manage all those steps with, uh, with um, farming themselves. So um, we've gone through two, uh, two different strategies. Let's, uh, let's hit the third one. Um, Cameron, I'm gonna turn this to you. Do you wanna share this? Do you wanna share your screen or do you want me to click through the slides for you? Uh, you can just click through the slides for me. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be great. Um, so thanks uh, for everybody sticking around so far. Um, so Hank's gone through a couple of different techniques already, uh, but as we move forward, uh, you know, the, the other methods that we can look at is trying to target a broader audience where um, you know where you're trying to sort of like just cast a net a little wider uh, geographic area uh, and try to get people engaging with you to come in to um, you know to look for valuation information on their homes uh, and this actually is these pair really nicely with sort of the sell and squeeze pages that we talked about earlier but we'll start talking about get seller focused advertising which in the marketplace, if you're looking for it, it's actually called Get Seller Leads. You can look for the little blue funnel with the coin um, as the icon. That's how you're going to find it. And this is going to uh, be a nice product to bring in to get some advertising going, to draw people to your website and actually submit their interest to you to receive a home value information. So if we move on to the next slide. So what we've done with this product is we've kind of taken our in-house advertising team and we've developed these advertisements that we run on Facebook. And you can see an example of it there on the left-hand side where we're targeting people who are looking for home valuations in a geographic area. And typically what we do is we take the center of your zip code of choice um, or postal code of choice if you're in, in Canada, because I know we have a couple of Canadian agents on the on the webinar today. We take your, uh, your geographic area, we draw a 15 mile radius circle around that center point and then we target anybody who is in that area as a, an adult um you know facebook determines because it's a real estate ad we're looking for people who are homeowners and renters uh, mostly homeowners in this case because we're targeting sellers uh, and then we built up an ad that has a call to action that is trying to draw in people who are specifically looking for um, evaluation on their home because they might be early in the stages of looking to move. Um, so this is a little different from what Nosy Neighbor has done because we're uh, we're sort of casting a very wide net over a broad area as opposed to being hyper local inside of an area where um, you know a recent sale or listing has occurred. Uh, we're casting a much wider net here to try and bring people in. The call to action, like I said, is helping to filter down to just those sellers. Um, and the idea with these ads is you're going to put these out there. And then as these leads are coming into your database, you're going to be engaging with these people and learning a little bit more about them and getting them a detailed report that helps them understand the market that they're entering into and try to move them into becoming a, uh, a listing with you. The one thing I'll say about the leads that we get from these, um, these advertisements is that they do tend to be uh, a little higher intent, a higher cost lead. So they're a little further down the funnel because they are actually going through multiple steps in order to submit their information to you. If we go to the next uh, slide, we'll talk through that. So once they see the ad and they click on learn more, they're actually going to be directed to a landing page where they're going to enter their address. And when they do that, um, we actually will use that same mechanism that Hank talked about before using coal data. And we try to match up the address with the homeowner's contact information, which we capture on the uh, on the form and then we submit that into kv core so you're actually getting um, the lead receiving some form of a an early stage estimate as to what the average home value is right now on the landing page they're going to submit their information and then they're going to actually be put into a uh, campaign on in kv core that's going to get them some information including a market report um, about there with a with a report on the valuation of their address 
um, as well as, and that's going to get coming to them every month. Um, but we're also trying to capture as much information as possible. So after they've submitted their lead, we actually request some more information from them, like what, how many bedrooms and bathrooms and the condition of their home, are they planning to sell or so? So it's a little more advanced than what we saw on the squeeze page because we're asking a few more questions about it. We're capturing different contact information, including their cell phone number on the second step and passing that into KV Core and updating them there. So once they submit learn more on Facebook, they're going to be directed to the site, they enter in their address, and then uh, they're going to submit that lead with their contact information into KV Core, and they're going to get on that market report. Um, we try to keep this and make it as simple as possible uh, to reduce the number of steps. So you're going to get the lead once they submit their contact information. We don't wait until they fill out the additional information like bedrooms and bathrooms. You're at least going to get the very least, you're going to get their address, their uh, name, their email address at the very least uh, submitted into KV Core. Okay, so if we move on to the next one. Once they're in KV Core, we actually do apply a, um, a, a campaign onto them. So there's a drip campaign that starts running with them uh, right away when they get into KV Core, and this is automatic. Um, it's going to run for 390 days, and it's a combination of emails, uh, text messages once you get their phone number, um, you know, tasks that's going to be put on there for you, as well as they're going to receive a subscription to the monthly market reports. They're always going to be kept up to date with what's happening in the market. But at least you've got some things happening where you're getting back to them and you're sending information through that is uh, going to, um, you know, is going to create engagement with them so that they can, uh, you know, you can engage in conversations. And like I said before, what we really want you to do with this is once you've got these leads coming in is, you know, engage with these leads and try to get them to provide information to you so that you can get a really detailed report, a CMA put together for their property and get that in front of them. And all of this will be kept uh, on the timeline for the lead inside of KB Core, so you can see exactly what went to them, what versions of the market report they received, so you can open it up and you can click through and see what they've received. All of that will be automated, but it's all stored alongside the record inside of the, the timeline there. We move on to the next slide. So the, uh, the benefit of using this is that if you are, um, you know, used to running Facebook ads or you have run Facebook ads in the, in the past, you know, we're doing all of that for you. This is really one click. It makes it really easy for you. Uh, you don't need to worry about how you're going to get those leads into KV Core to take advantage of all the uh, great optimization and the, and the uh, automation that we have there. We're doing all of that work up front for you. And we're also managing these ads to make sure that we're optimizing them and they're running multiple versions. We're testing back and forth to make sure which one is working the best. And over time, um, these leads, uh, you know, we're gonna be adding additional advertising destinations. So you kind of get to be benefit from our uh, product roadmap as we enhance this over time. Uh, and we have close ties with Facebook and, and with uh, other advertisers where we're managing to make sure that we're always compliant with their rules and their regulations around how these ads should run. Um, so we're always taking care of the management of these ads for you, so you don't need to worry about. We're gonna make sure we're optimizing the spend so you're not overspending or, or underspending. We're always gonna be generating leads for you and running the best version of the ad that we can. On the next slide. Cameron, a couple of questions about pricing yeah, sure. coming through on this and availability. Yeah. Just, um, just if, if uh, um, you can, just um, some people are asking if it's if it's included and how much it costs. Right. So uh, this this is extra. This is an add on to KV Core. Uh, the next slide, I think I've got the pricing laid out. Um, I do not. I don't know why I took that slide out. It was a mistake. Um, so the uh, this is not included. This is an uh, additional add-on you find through the marketplace. Plans for uh, Get Seller Lead starts at $500 per month, um, where we're going to get you that exposure on, uh, on Facebook and get those ads running for you. Um, you can choose your budget starting at $500. You can choose $750, $1,000, or $1,500 a month. And then uh, really all you have to do is go through the steps that Hank is showing select the website you want to direct traffic to. Uh, once you add it to KV Core, you're going to take open up the order form where you can set the budget for yourself, uh, 500, 750, 1,000, 1,500. All you really need to do is pick a zip code or a postal code you want to target um, and then um, put that in there and then set up any compliance text that you might have. If there's rules and regulations in your local market that you need to have something like a license number or your brokerage name and phone number, that kind of stuff on your advertising, you can add it in here and that will make its way onto the ad as well. Uh, and then once you get through, we'll get that up and running the next day. So it's, it's really simple to get this going. Apologies for not having that slide in there. I was supposed to have pricing in there and I, 
I did not include that. That's uh, I, my apologies. We covered it. Thanks, Cameron. Awesome. Uh, cool. So moving on. So that's the first advertising option. This is kind of like an always on month to month um, uh, purchase that you're going to make. It's going to run for you. Uh, we do require a three month commitment on that. So once we get it up and running, we want you to have that running for three months to really let the optimization run, let it get ramped up and running uh, to its fullest potential before uh, you know, you make any decisions on it. After that, it's month to month, but it is always on and it's running for you in, in generic. Uh, if we look over to property boosts as, an as another example, this is another way to generate seller leads using a new feature that we just implemented in the fall, which is our just sold ads on property boost. And if you click on that next slide, this is what a property boost just sold ad looks like. And as opposed to what we had with the seller leads where we're looking for anybody who's looking to just sell their home, we're actually leveraging an existing listing and we're sharing a little bit about it. Um, and uh, we're trying to generate interest in the local market using that listing as kind of our center point for our 15 mile radius to draw people in and look at this. So instead of using, uh, like I said, a generic ad, we're a lot more focused saying, I just sold this property in your neighborhood. Uh, are you interested in this? Now, where this is different from the get seller leads is that it is, like I said, driven off of a listing, but we also include the same lead form that you have with um, with Facebook, uh, like from Property Boost. So if you're used to using this to, uh, to promote your listings that you have for sale, um, you're still going to get that really, really good quality contact information coming through from the Facebook profile included in the leads that are being dropped in KV Core. Um, you're not going to get addresses through these, but you are getting the interest of someone who is looking and with really good contact information, including name, phone number, and email address coming from the Facebook profile. We do drop them onto that same page that I showed you before where they can enter their address but um, you're going to be getting uh, the contact information up front. So you're probably going to get a higher volume of these leads, but people who have sort of clicked through, they've registered, and uh, but haven't filled out the address form. Um, but it's still a good source of leads coming through on Property Boost. So how do we go about building these? It's really simple. Cameron, um, before you can go search building, for, can I, can I stop you for one question? Absolutely. Um, uh, somebody's asking, are these only our listings or other agents sold as well? So you can boost any listing that you want. Um, as long as you have permission, um, you can boost another agent's, um, you know, listing. If you, if you, uh, work with them and get permission from them to do so, you could do that. Um, you can search for any listing that you want inside of KV core. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I think I've got an example on, on what that looks like. So when I go to property boost and I search, you'll be able to identify your sold listings by looking at the one that I've got highlighted here where it says sold in parentheses next to the listing address. So all you have to do is start typing in the address. You'll see the sold record for that in locations where you have the sold data feed coming into KV Core. That's my one caveat here is that uh, if your brokerage or your uh, or your area, your MLS doesn't include a sold feed, for example, you're not gonna see these sold listings. But what you can do is you can create a manual listing in KV Core for any listings that you've uh, sold previously, and then you could boost those. Those are identified, like you can see at the top of the list, the one, two, three, four, uh, Bellevue Avenue, which has manual in parentheses. Um, that's for any manual listings that you create for yourself in KV Core. That's really useful, especially if you have a listing that maybe you sold it in the winter and all of the photos that were in the MLS were, uh, were snowy and you're going to go and do a boost in the springtime and you want to uh, upload a, a more recent photo of the property with a nice green grass, you can create a manual copy of that listing and then go ahead and create a sold boost from that. So um, once you've uh, uh, pulled up your listing and then you're going to, at the top here, you can see we've got this nice sold boost type, which you can select that. That's going to change the ad template to be that sold boost and make sure that when the ad is running, all of the right calls to action and the right uh, link, et cetera, is all being used. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and pick your plan, which you'll see on the next page. We have a number of pricing options for property boost starting at one week for $60. Now I've I've opted to leave the $45 three day option out of here because with these sold boosts, the great thing about them is that they do 
uh, kind of like never expire. They don't really uh, go out of fashion. They're always going to be current because you did sell it. So um, with these, you probably want to run your sold booths for as long as you can and just keep them running in the background so that they're always going to be um, showing off listings that you've sold. So um, if you want to start at a week or two weeks or three weeks even and, and run these booths to see how they do for you, uh, and then once they perform, you can always come back and run them again for another period of time or let them expire. And once you, your next listing has uh, sold, you can go ahead and boost that one again. So it's another good option for you to get out there and create an advertisement that is leveraging your existing listing inventory um, to generate more listings for yourself. Now, that being said, Property Boost does have other listing types in there. So even as you're boosting your active listings that are on the market, um, you know, most people who are homeowners will have a property that they might be looking to sell. So as you're engaging with people that are early in their stages of looking at properties, through a property boost, it's a really great time to start talking to them when they get back to you and they, they engage with your leads as a lead. Uh, it's a really great uh, conversation starter to talk about uh, the property that they're currently in. Um, are they uh, represented? Are they looking to sell? Can I get you a market report? So property boost is always a really, really valuable tool to use to build up your database with fresh listings based on, or fresh leads based on the listings you already have. <clears throat> Awesome, Cameron. Thank you. We've covered a lot of ground today. Um, um, looking at just stuff that's built into KV Core, some techniques around farming and circle prospecting, and then a, a few marketplace products as well. So there's probably some people who are kind of wondering, well, well, which 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 thing should I do? And the answer could be uh, you should do a couple of them, or you should only do one. But um, uh, this this hopefully this slide kind of communicates. Um, the, the use cases or um, the situations that are most appropriate for these things. Um, first off, everyone should be using their sell pages. It's included, it's free. Everyone should be doing uh, squeeze pages and landing pages. Those are all included, part of your website, uh, part of the package. Um, uh, so you should be, be taking advantage of those. Farming and circle prospecting. Uh, again, that's using consumer data, consumer data and listing data to farm a specific geography. Um, you want to, th these are people who want to build their database and want to get their name in front of people before they're ready to sell. If somebody is already um, uh, thinking about calling an agent, it's probably already too late. So you want to get in front of uh, them in the consideration cycle. And then the other thing is, you want a sustained exclusive brand um, result over the, the, long, the long term. So that's something where you have this consistency that's going month after month, week after week, hitting uh, people in your, uh, your specific geography um, for um, basically promoting yourself as the expert in that area. Seller focused advertising and property boost. Cam, do you want to do, Cameron, do you want to take these? Sure, I was just asking, answering some questions there. Yeah, so for seller-focused advertising, if you're looking for those higher intent leads further down the funnel uh, from Facebook, uh, seller-focused advertising is a great place to go um, because you are sort of targeting specific people who are looking to uh, find out what their home is worth. Uh, they're following those additional steps and sort of in, uh, getting their intent uh, sort of raised up there by filling those out, that form out off, off site. Um, that definitely is a good one for you. Um, and then for your property boost, if you want to leverage the listings that you already have or have already sold to grow your business, it's a great way to get started with that, um, to leverage those uh, using property boost to go out and, uh, and use those again to try and get more, uh, more listings to grow your business from. Uh, that's a great way. It's, a, it's an inexpensive way as well to get in there to get started with this and see how it goes and sort of build up your system with, with these seller leads. Um, and, um, and, and that's a, that's a good place to start. Excellent. Great. Well, we want to take a minute to thank you for, um, for your partnership. Um, we value, um, you tremendously and, and all of the challenges that you face and hopefully you're finding that KV core and these other add-on products are, are helping you as an agent to, to maximize your success and your productivity. Um, 2022 is going to be even better than 2021 um, in so many different respects. And hopefully we shared some things with you today that um, 
are tools that you can use or techniques that you can put into play in order to, to maximize your success as well. Ryan, Cameron, any other uh, parting thoughts before we uh, sign off? Uh, no, if you have any additional questions, the uh, support team is always there to help you out with the uh, with the little chat icon on in KV Core. Uh, just as uh, they beat me to it, somebody asked, can we reach out to somebody one on one? We absolutely do offer uh, one on one services. You'll find those in the marketplace as well. I cannot remember what they're called at the moment, but there is a uh, uh, coaching service that you can get in touch with us for a one on one if you need some additional guidance on um, that, how how to that go might about, have been about the sales questions related to this too, Cameron. That, Correct. That, yeah. Right. So um, yeah. if, if you have questions about these products in particular, just hit the chat button in the in the marketplace and marketplace team will get back to you pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. That'll give you an option to um, to sign up for a one on one consultation on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, just I, I do want to mention uh, at two o'clock, Pete will be talking, uh, doing our next level session. Sorry. And if you have any additional questions related to this, uh, we've been doing a number of webinars uh, at insiderrealestate.com slash webinars about seller leads, about seller lead conversion. And we'll probably stick on that theme today at two. If you want to talk a little bit about the conversion side of this uh, or just continue on with any other questions related to KV Core. So uh, you can find that link on the calendar in, uh, in your KV Core dashboard. Is that two o'clock Eastern today, uh, Ryan? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's about in about ten minutes. Awesome. All right, ten minutes, Ryan. We'll give you some time to go grab a drink. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank All you. right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.